Like my normal account. <laughs> Please show if he's made little, sadly. I don't even know what I have on this Vito. I have... Miramasa, Tonganrampa, VLR, Encode Realize. How did we not get Encode Realize? All images. Hmm, this bullshit. I can't. Used it more than I thought I'd use it, but I still haven't used it much, man. Rear Master Rebirth's good shit, baby. The only video game that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to their new game. I don't know if any more information's been announced on it. I remember what it's called. The hell, like a Mac or some shit. Yeah, Code Realize is really cool. I mean, it's one of those where you're playing as a chicken with a bunch of dudes. But we actually played like a week ago the fan disc for it, which adds like just kind of like more routes. It's got epilogues. Um few more routes, a couple side stories. And so there's like a PS4 combo now where you can get the original game and the fan disc all together. So there's quite a bit of content, but the short of it is Code Realize is like, it's like a steampunk game. Yeah, it's mainly like a lot of crazy action and big drama and stuff. Set in like the steampunk world. Or each of the different dudes or main characters is like, I don't know, like some kind of weird fictional or historical character. There's like Lupin, like Van Helsing, and Dr. Frankenstein, and Sherlock Holmes, and just like random shit like that. And so each one has like drastically different routes. Like once they start up, the routes are just totally fucking different. There's like nothing similar between them. Other than like recurring characters, and it's all just kind of like fun story set in like a steampunk world. That's it's pretty well realized steampunk world too. It's a fun time. I mean, if I was gonna recommend somebody a VN just like out of the blue, there's a few I'd recommend before that, but it's definitely worth playing. Mama. You can handle like some very, very slight romance. There's not much in that game at all, but if you don't mind a little bit, it's a pretty enjoyable kind of steampunk action thing. It's well written enough for sure. This one feels like mediocre as fuck, but Code Realize is pretty good. It's one of the few steampunk things I've even, like, consumed. It's not uh, as much as you'd think. Out there. I'm trying to think of, like, some games that are, like, steampunk. The only movie I can think of is fucking Wild Wild West, man. <laughs> That's more of a fucking meme movie, man. Bloodbath McGrath. Ah. <laughs> もしかして裏口入学しばらく見ねえ間にすげえ無…せっかくの悪いガキ大将がいなければ…あ…だって…二人ともずっと会ってない…ぴったりじゃない! <笑> the fuck is this route right now, dude? The people involved, yeah. Well, the people are cool in it. The main routes would be Saint Germain, Van Helsing, um, Impey Barbican, Lupin. I think I said Van Helsing, Sherlock Holmes. I think I said Frankenstein. A um, couple in universe characters. And there's some side story ones with like the Mafia and other shit like that. It's all good fun. 
I'm not like crazy about steampunk either, but they, they make it interesting. Minato. I feel like nothing to play, and you've played all like the really good popular VMs. It's definitely worth some time. What the fuck is going on right now? This is also wildly different from like everything we did. It's really odd we went straight to the best ending. Like right away. It makes everything else kind of like weird. Jesus, I feel like I'm about to hear fucking platinum disco or some shit. <laughs> Don't they do a countdown on that? She sounds like the same girl, man. I know my voice actor as well. She's pretty familiar. Slice of life, right? Yeah. I mean, I like me some slice of life, but... I don't know if you call this good slice of life. <laughs> and it's so out of the blue, I don't know if I'm interested. ちんたら食ってたら料理冷めんだろ。先にちょっかい出して。まあまあ、甘いものでも食べて機嫌直して。I don't want to go watch some actual slice of life shit. I actually haven't read much uh, just pure slice of life shit on like any on any BN or not stream or otherwise. I tend to gravitate towards a lot of like serious murder mystery. I think it's just what a lot of like popular ones are. Or just like really serious drama action shit. Like, I enjoy Slice of Life and shit, but I don't hear as much talk about good VMs of Slice of Life that aren't like sex ones, you know? Like fucking Neko Par or some shit. Monster Mansion, Akihabara Day. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a little. The, the stark contrast. It's kind of hard to get into the Slice of Life. Then I don't even know if I'm gonna continue the game. Like we've already like beat it. I'm just like, what am I? Doing? What am I unlocking? You know. Um. Let's see. Huh? Sense is bad. Beat it. Omae ni dake wa. Normally I'd let the voice acting play out, but I'm trying to get through this a little quicker. Also, none of the characters are like super interesting. There's like one character that I'd say I enjoy. He's kind of like a, a gimmicky dude. Like this dude on the right is unbearable and he's like everywhere. One of the other cool guys ends up being the fucking merchant dude, like the fucking mastermind, so he's like an evil guy by the end. This guy on the left probably the only decent one. Yeah, they, they're, these two have this thing where they just get in fights, like play fights. That's like fights, but it's supposed to be like their friends kind of deal. All the fucking time, like just hundreds of times through the whole story. And it never really goes anywhere. It's just kind of like, I guess, supposed to be this gimmick, funny, quirk, but. I got sick of it before the prologue finished, dude. And that was fucking. like. way long ago, man. So that, ah. あ、誰かさんがいなけりゃもっと楽しかったんだけど。お前、え、何その被害妄想。別に宅死線が語ってんだよ、その。うん。みんな揃ってたら。え。<笑><笑><笑> 
さてっとうんこっちこそ誘ってくれうんうん拓哉くん忙しいシッシッ早く帰れ今度会ったら閉めてやあれそう、in the story I get in the epilogue they're like all in a coma but in, during the story it's only supposed to be the, the guy who just loves twin brother that's in a coma <clears throat> and then there's like a twist that one of the guys has been like dead and but I, I guess they were all in a coma it's kind of like weird I don't know it, I feel like they just wanted to throw out twists more than like make them make a whole lot of sense or I guess they're just all in coma. I don't know. I don't really care either. <laughs> I'm just kind of throwing it out there. That's why it's like was weird to everybody just now. It's kind of the context, I guess. One guy's dead, one's in a coma. As far as they know, which I'm guessing this is not real world. This is like fake real world. So it'd fall in line with everything before the real epilogue. This is pretty fucking long. What the hell? Like, let me show you the choice we made before we got here. Boyos, because I need to just see it myself. I forgot like how we even ended up here, like what the context was. So at this point, the, the white-haired guy was like turned into like a half monster or some shit, and ran off. So everybody's just kind of like dealing with it, I guess. And everybody's having their memories come back from seeing some of these pictures that the mastermind sent. And so now she's just kind of sitting here in bed thinking about shit. And then they give you a plethora of choices. And... I think we picked why did I come here? She just like falls asleep and I guess we're like in a really long dream sequence. Maybe she falls into like some kind of weird abyss. There's supposed to be like this abyss, like they're teetering on going back to living and being taken into the abyss, which is like, you know, permadeath. A lot of choices for only two ways it can go, yeah. You either go down into here oh there's this too which we're gonna find out this is the only thing we really haven't done that i could try out i don't know what it's gonna be but they all essentially go back into it but with like a little extra branch on the side i don't know other than that it's really just these two which i haven't even been able to fuck with and then this which is a branch off an epilogue which i don't really know how that works I'm afraid that a lot of them are tied to doing a lot of side shit here. Like, read all of the side stories. Like, a lot of it's just like... There's not even, like, character building in some of these. Some of them do. I'll give it that. But a lot of them are like, we're gonna go cooking, and, like, nothing really happens. But... Whatever. Maybe we'll check it out. I kind of just said, like, I'm going to go until I get super tired, and then we'll make a judgment call on whether we're going to continue tomorrow. I've already been playing for 13 hours, so... Good chance we're not going to continue tomorrow. I do appreciate that it has a flowchart. 
There's not many VMs that do have done that. The only ones I can think of are VLR, which had the best use. I guess the new version of 999 had it. I guess ETD had it. Those are all in the same fucking series, so. And now this game. There's probably more, but I think uh, flowcharts for games that they can actually work in are like a really good thing. It's also one of the things that turns a lot of people who aren't into VNs off of VNs. I know a lot of people just like getting one ending and calling it a day, where it's kind of like more to it usually in a VN. The flowchart like kind of lets you see that and just navigate easier. Not everybody wants to like restart the entire game and like figure out all these little choices they have to make to get on like a mediocre alternate route. Yeah, the Nonary game ones, yeah. Zero Escape. Those are the ones I mean. So they do a good job of it. And I really like those. Well, I like not the first and the second one. The third one I don't like that much. But... I wish I was playing those right now. I'd rather replay 999 than finish this at this point. Yeah, I was theory crafting at the beginning of this and everything, because you know, it, it set itself up like it was a mystery, but it's pretty whatever. There's not a whole lot of theory crafting to be had. Okay. そう。じゃあ、明日は2人で出かけ。ほら。俺のこと嫌いじゃないけど。みなとさん。まだなっちゃんが好きなの。俺のこと意識してくれ。ほら。俺のこと意識してくれ。ほら。俺のこと意識して
<laughs> dude. See, I didn't get experience that. I, I started playing them well after ZTD got announced, and then I played ZTD on release, but I'd only just caught up with the series like a month before ZTD. So everything was fresh. But it, like having that rise back and then just fall, <laughs> just, just fucking, like it would have been better off dead. It just, I don't know, that would have been hilarious. Like all the hopes and dreams, like finally it's gonna finish and then let's get fucked. I keep reading Natsu as Nasu. And then I wanna go read Hollow Otter Axial. I hope we can play that on stream. Gotta make sure there's no sex and all that. I think I've talked about it a million times. I bet people have answered me a million times whether there's sex in it or whether it's dream safe. I just I have like zero. I have like the memory of a fucking ant sometimes. Oops. Yeah, Hollow, Hollow Adder, Autoraxia has voices for like the last two, three months, I think. That's why I want to kind of do it. I just got to make sure it's stream safe. There are sex scenes, but I think you can just not do them. Okay. As long as you can turn them off. I can't really risk running into like a accidental sex scene on stream. I'm not getting my account banned for it. Because our fate playthrough was of the Nualta, Nuva, Nueva, whatever, <laughs> Nuevas. Which has no sex scenes, so like remakes it to work without sex scenes, if, where the sex scenes might have been important. That's right. You can't turn them off? Ah, uh, okay. I wish every VN just had that option. But sex scenes are such a, like, an... You know, integral part to a lot of people, to the sales of a lot of VNs. I feel like they would never even think about removing it. I mean, there's been a lot more all-ages versions of games coming out, because it's like Steam and shit, but... Not for everything. <laughs> really, Tueva Nueva. It's like Real to Nua or some shit. Like, I like streaming my VNs a lot. So I have to always play ones without, like, sex. People will always. It's like I've always talked about it as like a weird, like vicious cycle. Like they make a lot of money off the sex and a lot of ends, but then that like builds a community that. <sighs> that's that's weird. It's like you 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 make a lot of money off the sex, but then you can't get a lot of people who like avoid the sex shit to play ends. But then if you start pandering to people who aren't playing VNs and the people who just want sex aren't buying, so it's like, I feel like they have to feel like they have to include it in there. That's kind of the point. I've probably, I've talked about this a million times, but. It just sucks that like sex is like a really it's kind of standard part of a lot of VNs when it's not important at all. I mean, I don't, it's, I'm not like afraid of having sex scenes. If I could stream sex scenes on fucking Twitch, we would have played a fucking bazillion different games by now, but... Yeah, I'm really interested in that one. I really want that, The Witch on the Holy Night. I, w I was talking about it a while back. Oh shit, you can censor it, dude. 
God damn, dude. Cliss is my fucking man. Godly, dude. Just censor age content straight out. Yeah, we'll definitely be playing that. That'll be one of the next ones we do. Either Steins Gate or that. And I didn't have sex scenes. Maybe that's why, man. <laughs> I just don't get, like, if you're gonna get your fucking wank off, why a VN, man? Like, unless it's purely focused on the sex, which is, I mean, whatever. At that, at that point, it's just like a porn VN. But, like, if it's like this, where it's like 99% bullshit, and then all of a sudden there's like one sex scene, like, how is that, like, the defining sell, sell for you? Like, I'm all down for, like, a 30 hour just sex wank. Or, like, you know, like, a sire, like, it's just, like, all fun jokes, but, like, like fate where there's like two sex scenes in it, you know, like come on man. Sex scenes and VNs are shit too. Yeah, that too. It's like when I talk to about like a lot of people about VNs in here, I'm like I always ask them you know, how you know, how are the sex scenes, are they like important? And usually everybody's like, Yeah, they're not important at all. They don't feel like they have any point. And I'm like, so every time it feels like the sex scenes are just super forced. Out of the VNs I've played, it's like Sayano Udo has got like sex scenes that I feel like are important just because because of how weird it was I haven't fully played through that granted because I can't stream it I might find a side I can't stream it on <laughs> dude if ZTD had like horrible sex scenes with those fucking janky ass models it would have been fucking it's already like elder god tier man but it would have been like just the apex man God of Gods, man. Dude, this route fucking sucks my ass. What is going on? It's like, why does the worst character get fucking so much focus? We get it. He's a whiny fucking bitch who's jelly as fuck. He's borderline yonder. Apex visual novel, dude, I just, I just have to bow down in the fucking ZTD at eight scenes. Be at the top of all my lists, man. Yeah, his fucking... He's got like the worst design. And art. Like the quality of it. This is the mansion. The one they're stuck in is like infinitely large. It's because it's some weird purgatory shit. But... Whoa! Ten months, man. It's over the due date. It's over the due date. Thanks, brother. I forgot I made the alert box smaller on the other screen, but not this one. Not that anybody's worried about their immersion in Psychedelica. Thank you, my mom. Did you finish up your God of War? Did you get your 100%? So this is where like one of the guys drowned and the other is like comatose or whatever the fuck. My baby. My baby. Dingo ate my baby.
It's not raining, I'm crying. Wait. So they're like explaining the entire backstory right now. But why? Maybe you can only unlock this if you do everything else? Like, I don't know, like... All gates, chests, whatnot? Nice, dude. You still like it as much as you did on the way up? I did. I'm very much looking forward to the next one. Dude, this yellow fucker is everywhere, man. Is this loss? Yeah, what is this? It's uh, Psychedelica of the Black Butterfly. Choose Niflheim. So that made it easier? Yeah, that's good. Um, it's a pretty mediocre Tome Vienna dream. This is a weird route right now. The game doesn't take place in the real world at all. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know, it's like, I'd say it's mediocre. It's not shit. Not amazing. I guess that's what mediocre is. You tell my parts. I don't know if they're underplayed in this. They're just not very good. So I feel like they're not much of a focus. But I think they actually want you to get into some of the romance. This is by the people who did code realize and shit. Must be a different group. Yeah, it's not horrible. I mean, the basic gist is this group of people, this chick and a bunch of these dudes wake up in a mansion, like this weird dreamlike mansion with no memories. And they just have like their cell phones and there's a bunch of monsters in the mansion. So they get text messages from some kind of like, I don't know, mastermind, head of the mansion or something to look for the kaleidoscope shards so that they can remake the kaleidoscope. <laughs> it's not horrible, yeah. I'd be a good salesman for this game. So anyways, they gotta like hunt down these monsters and like survive so they can make this kaleidoscope for this dude, I guess, and regain their memories in the process. And it sounds a lot better when I explain it like that than how it actually goes down. Monsters, not much of that. The romance exists. I don't know. Like, if you've never read, like, many VNs at all, or, like, anything, I guess, it's probably pretty cool. But when you actually, like, have read and played a few things, it's a lot of, like, very... You never know the VNs. That sounds interesting to me, but you never know the VNs. Yeah. Well, if that doesn't sound interesting to you, well, it's not. <laughs> I feel like I gave it more credit than it fucking had coming to it with that little summary there. On paper, it sounds like it's going to be some thriller, but it's not. 
it's all right. That's okay. Right now we're exploring. It does have a flowchart, which is really nice. Um, right now I'm exploring. We somehow got the best ending immediately. Like we somehow cranked all right directly to it. Yeah, this song's chill. It also has a little bit of gameplay. Like a shooting game. You can use to unlock side stories. We're just kind of like delving into... It doesn't sound interesting if I know it's an Atome VN. Oh, yeah. Unlike Code Realize, the Atome is a little heavier than this. Or Code Realize. I would call Code Realize just like a steampunk action. Shonen. Before an Atome. This one's more Atome. Because everything else sucks. So. Anyways, we're kind of just exploring the other routes right now. To see if there's really more going on than what the best ending says. Um, so far it's just a bunch of random bullshit. Like 10-20 minute character endings and routes. I don't know what this is, but we're still here. It's okay, apparently this company is releasing like... A game like this every month or some shit? It's like Seven Scarlet or some shit comes out next month, and then there's another one of these called Psychedelica of the Ashen Hawk or something coming out. I don't know if we'll play either of those, but maybe if they're good. This one's not good enough where I would just blind faith jump into another one, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The game tries to do a lot of things, none of them super unique. Mass produced Atome. I think they all were released a long time ago. They're localized once a month. <laughs> yeah, Mass produced Atome would be a little too juicy for me. We've done two Atome games within a month, and that's more than I've done, like, ever. I've played like these, like, my third Atome game. And two of those were code realized games. I mean, I don't hate the idea of an Atome game, I just haven't played many. I always have something else. I don't remember what I was saying before. I think if we're gonna do another Tome game, I'll do Hakuoki. I think that's actually supposed to be pretty good. It's like Feudal Japan. Like the Shinsengumi or some shit turned into like weird, like Oni Demons or some shit. And so it's like this funky, like action demon. Feudal Japan thing going on. That's supposed to be pretty solid. Got like a sequel and all that. A few sequels. I think I would do those before I do any more of this shit. Kazuya. Wakaru ka? Osana najimi no ai? Na? Oboeten daro? I think that's the first one. The one that released recently in the West is Hakuoki Ido Blossoms or some shit. I don't know what the first one is exactly. I haven't done enough research. I just know the general gist of the story and that it's pretty well received. And the art seemed pretty good. It reminded me a lot more of Code Realize when it came to the art. Maybe it's the A-Team. あの事故の後体は
I guess the point I was making is that I don't care if the game tries to do something unique, if it just does it well. But because the game doesn't try to do... It uses a lot of twists that other games have had, and a lot of concepts other games have had for its setting. On top of that, it doesn't actually do it well, like, it just kind of whatever. Like, I can give it some credit if it was just, like, super unique, and but kind of like an oddball, like, Deadly Premonition or some shit. Oh. It just kind of rides the line. And at least the routes are more different than like psychopaths. <laughs> Mandatory happiness, but I'll give it that. So yeah, the ribbon that fucking ruined everybody's lives. Maybe we'll do fucking hollow out tomorrow. We'll see. I'm still feeling a VN. We can jump into that. I want to do some gameplay though. I was saying earlier I wanted just some like really hardcore tuny bullshit. Might not know what to play. Probably DS Serie would be the like super tuny bullshit. I don't know if I want to buy that right now. Probably just do something else. Play Rose Guns days. For fucking like super cheesy Rikishi. Chunikia Kino bullshit. I feel like I want to play Higginbana too before jumping into RGD.俺は部活入ってねえし、勉強はここでもできる。でも拓也くん、小さい頃は有名な選手になっ。それどころじゃねえだろ。こうなっちまった以上。His Fuck, dude. This part just keeps going, man. I mean, the main thing I'm hoping for is I want to see if there's a Everybody Lives ending and if they're gonna give any backstory to the Purgatory Mansion thing. I mean, there's implied lore. And so you can kind of just like piece together what's going on, I guess. Maybe that's all they wanted. They kind of just give you like a quick blurb at the very end about some weird merchant who tried bringing people back from the dead. And then you see a picture of like one of the this lolly character that's been in the game. And so you just kind of assume that he was trying to bring his daughter back or some shit. And that's like how the mansion came to be, it's like haunted or something. It's very ambiguous. Doesn't explain shit. I feel like you can easily infer that, but it's hardly like in-depth backstory. I'm just curious if there is anything else. If there's not, I just feel like we'll be done once I start falling asleep on stream.
Yeah, this game just came out in the West on the Vita. That's why we're, that's why we're playing. It's new, new release. I think it's been out for like at least three or four years, though. In Japan, I haven't really done my research on it. You're gonna wake up. So maybe this is going to be like some ending. I mean, at this point, if you go from the beginning of this section to where we are now, you can just eliminate this entire story. Like, they explain why they're all, like, why this dude's in a coma. Like, they're having, like, little backstory segments. It's, like, a totally different VN with the same, like, out of purgatory shell thing going on. But I don't know why. Like, I'm not really... Tree treading ground. Just in a... Really think about it. Sinpakuga。It's better than seeing the fucking weird yellow dude. Watch the yellow dude just fucking yandere them. <laughs> this would be interesting if it all of a sudden had some murder death bullshit. I don't need any like fucking love triangle jelly dudes up. Uh... だよ。はるか。はるか。あ、最後に会った時は赤ん坊ってほど小さくはなかったと思うけど。へえ。で、その春が彼氏ができたんだって。お父さんが携帯代なんて私よりと返し。お前なんか母。茶化さないでよ。
don't give a fuck. We've gone through this rigmarole like a hundred times in a different setting. It's hard to get really invested when I wasn't even really that into it the first time. This bitch looks different every CG, man. It's one of those games where she never looks the same. Bitch got some big ass tears, dude. Big ass big tears, I guess. ふん。そういうことだった。最近授業後に迎えに行ってもいない。拓也とこそこそ。別にこそこ。言い訳しないで。あきちゃん。みんなと君はどこまで逃げれば気がすむの。俺から逃げる口実になっちゃん使うくせにそれで今度はタクヤ二人それとも私考えてなくてもそういうことでしょ認めなよ自分の弱さを秋お前いい加減にしろ お前もさ、なんで今更あら…別に理由なんて… 秋ちゃん、そうじゃないの。拓也君と確かに会いに行ったのは。お前な。それで湊に慰めて欲しいんじゃないの。二人とも弱虫だよ。あの頃見てて、イライラする。俺にないもの全部持ってたはずなのに。
So there's a thing on the right by the end of the game. They did find a piece of the kaleidoscope when they were kids. So it doesn't fully indicate this is like a dream, but I mean she started this real life thingy like when she fucking started dreaming, so The fuck this bitch is falling asleep? Yep, I'll take it. Huh? This is not a mistake. Why? Why? Ah, that's it. What's the meaning? I know. Oh, 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 やめてくれなのに肝心なこと隠してもミナトのお前最低だよ今さらミナトを巻き込まないでよ俺だってできるならそうするな何この知るかよ運転手に聞けってガッガッOh, this is like how they got there. Well, this is why they're in a coma. I was wondering what the fuck was going on, man. <laughs> so this is like the little prologue. I was like, how did they get in a coma? But then that guy was in a coma before them. Now uh, well, they explain it. Well, this shit actually happened. So yellow guy is just a huge fuck. <laughs> okay. Well, that's great. Well, I got some backstory I didn't care about.